Your love is my light Your smile, my sunshine And your kiss is like fire in my heart When I'm with you, it's like my day But then the sun sets whenever you walk away And the night falls whenever we're apart Discussions with Real Chicks. I'm your host for today, Michelle Duas Burt. I am the CEO and founder of Real Chicks Rock, and I'm just so excited to be here. I have a lot of beautiful people here at Studio 7 with me today, and so we will get to meet each one of them in just a second. I just want to take a minute to kind of give you guys some background as to what Real Chicks is all about. It's really a movement and a brand that I created, and it's really to touch all women. Uh, we want to touch the masses of women. We want to combat ratchetness, if you will. And there's several ways of, about go, going about it. We want to do community service. We want to mentor people, inspire women. We want to motivate them, and we want to pow empower them. We've done several different things in the past, but today we wanted to use our movement and our brand to have a voice. And so today we have a few beautiful women here at the table with us. They are very diverse in their own way. And those, for those of you that don't know, we are based here in Atlanta for this afternoon. So that gives you a sense of where we're coming from and who we're at and what we're about. But we have some women here at the table that are just awesome in their own way. And they've done a lot of great things. And I thought, what better way than to have these women with me today as the first broadcast of this platform? So again, I want to thank Studio 7 for allowing us to be here. We are at 393 Marietta Street in, in Atlanta, and we thank them for allowing us to do what we do here for this afternoon. But today, I just wanted to take a minute and just kind of introduce each one of our guests. To my left, and I know you can't see her, she is adorable. She goes by Madam CJ, and what does she do? She does everything. She'll let you know, tell you where to go, how to get there, and everything else. She eats clean but talks dirty and she knows exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. She is an activist in her own way. She's a singer, songwriter. She's passionate about everything that she does. She's little in height but big in stature. She is just a firecracker and she has a lot of things to say and she, she's not bashful about how she says it and when she says it. So with that, CJ, welcome Madam CJ. Thank you so much. All right. All right. My next person, the lovely Shantae Lagon. Shantae is a person that has the opportunity to interview several people in the arts department, if you will, whether it be music, dance, culture, etc. And you know, I just thought it would be so intriguing to hear what Shantae has to say. So she always does a great job in making people feel well welcome. When she does her interviews, whether it be through Creative Loafing, she is a writer. Uh, whether she does it through audio, she works with Slow Mo uh, Audio Team. So she's just awesome, and I just wanted to give her a platform to just share without any restrictions. So welcome, Shantae. Well, thank you, Michelle. You're so awesome. You're so great. Thank you. Look thank at this. You. Thank you. Beautiful women right here, and I'm glad to be here. I'm glad you're here. The next person I have is Atala Shabazz, Design Your Life. Okay? Design it. Design it. Thank you, Atala. She's a beautiful woman. She's a model. She's an activist. She's a teacher. 
Um, she's a person that gives all the time. Uh, I see her. I respect her. We call her queen in the neighborhood, in our community. Uh, we listen to what she has to say. She does a lot of things, and we just wanted to have her here today so that she can empower us with the thoughts and things that she has in her mind. Atala, welcome. Thank you so much, Michelle. All right. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. All right. I have one person that she's on her way, but I'll just give a warm introduction about her. It is Shanae Webb. She is part of Urban Spirit Dancers. She's an awesome woman as well. She's an activist in her own right. And she's a person that does and communicates with what she feels and what's on her mind through dance. She's very prevalent in the music, in the house music scene. And I thought it would just be just awesome to have her here on board with us as well. So she'll be joining us shortly. But for now, I just wanted to turn the tables and just kind of open up the floor and just ask these ladies, what does real really mean to you? And I'm going to start with Atala. What does that mean to you? So I, I'm, I'm also thinking about when you asked me about this. And real, if I may, is one of those words that I wouldn't say it bothers me, but it's a word that I think people throw around a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's used sometimes to slander people. It's used sometimes to empower people as well. So for me, you know, I think real is, of course, it, it, it differs for each person. It differs depending on where you come from, your culture, your specific life experience. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those words that I'm very careful about when I use it. I'm very careful about it because I don't want to ever use it to disempower people or to disenfranchise people. So it's one of those words I'm just, I, I use it delicately, mm -hmm. very delicately, because it's it, it can go either way for me. So it sounds like people have to earn that word coming from you. Well, not only that, I, I, not because I'm the standard, but more so because I think that it is something that it can just be, it's, it's so varied. It's so varied. You know, someone might think that you're real because of a, a neighborhood that you come from. Or somebody might think that you're real because you have natural hair, right. you right. know. So and right. then you know, so th those things differ, and they're as valuable as you want them to be. Gotcha. So that's why I, I use that word sparingly, and I don't use it. You keeping it real? Yeah. <laughs> or you you know, I like to say. I like to say it's really the real deal holy feel. I love when Snoop Dogg said that. <laughs> that was that was one of the best lines. I'm so serious. It's realer than real deal holy feel. Okay. Got it. Mm -hmm. Got it. Shante? <laughs> well, that's how you know, right? right. <laughs> I was like, that must be the realest thing ever. Exactly. <laughs> and I think it's funny coming from uh, where we are here in Atlanta. And, of course, everyone knows the real housewives, of course, of oh, Atlanta. Oh, my goodness. Yes. And so you're right when you say that that is a term that you have to be very careful about. Um, for myself, I think it's a matter of being authentic. And you can be authentic in whatever way, even if you're going to be ratchet. If you're going to be ratchet and real... That, and that's you. That's who you are. That's what you claim. I, I love a little ratchet. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I love a little you ratchet, know. a little smidgen of ratchet. Little I love bit. it. <laughs> so I, I think that it really does um, matter what your perspective is and what you consider to be authentic for yourself. Mm -hmm. And that can range, like Atala was saying. I don't think it means uh, any one thing. But if you are being true to whatever it is that you were called here to do and you do it in the way that only you can, then you're real. Mm -hmm. Okay. CJ. Madam CJ. Yes, Madam CJ, honey. Um, that, real. 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 <laughs> real. Um, but, yeah, I agree with Shantae. You know, um, it's a, an authentic, you know, um, I like to think of that that being, you know, a person that's authentic in whatever it is they do. Right. You know, like I have a, a, a good friend that I used to work with, and she has had the most ratchet life. But when I tell you that she is one of the most realest people, and I don't use that word a lot mm -hmm. for a lot of people, because I mean a lot of these people walk around here they fake, right. they don't know how to be real, right? You know, um, so when I when I think of um, that, when I think of when I think of her, I think of I think of real, I think of ratchet. She's endearing to me. She knows how to turn the ratchet off, right? And and, and promote you know whatever needs to be promoted at that moment, right? You know, um, but. Real to me is, is a person that's authentic in whatever it is they do. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you guys are pretty 
direct and honest, which is a great thing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take another bold step and ask, so what is the attraction to Real Chicks Rock? Like, why, when I asked you to be a part of this, why did you guys say yes? I said yes because I had saw the logo around town, mm -hmm. and I was just intrigued, you know. Um, I was intrigued because I had never seen anything like it before in Atlanta, and I've been here 18 years. And I am a part of a charity organization, but we're called the Ladies Board. Right. When I saw Real Chicks Rocks, I was like, hmm, what's that about? Right, right. You know? Right, okay. Right. I, I want to know more. Yeah, good. Yeah. Good. Shantae? And for me, I think it was a personal connection. Right. You know, knowing you, Michelle, and knowing all that you do and, um, you know, having respect for what it is that you do, it was definitely something that I wanted to support and be a part of. Um, and it's it's beyond your T-shirts. It's right. it's so much more than that. And so to be able to have a conversation and be around people who, who are doing their thing, I think, was important. It was something I wanted to be a part of. So, Atala? Like, everybody is rocking real chicks rock. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, seriously. I mean, even my mentee, my 15-year-old mentee, she saw you when I brought her to one of your events, and she was like, I want a T-shirt. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, like, there's something, it's, it's, it's enamoring, you know, and I think everybody wants to be, they want to be represented, mm -hmm. if you will. Right. So I think that's what it does. Right. Real Chicks Rock, it just, it just makes you feel like, well, that's me. Right. You know, that's me on some level. On some level. You know, on some level, that's me. And um, I think people can just really unite with that. I do. Thank you. So, Shanae, what does real mean to you? The best word I like to use, authentic, authenticity, mm -hmm. authentic, from your inside out. Um, I've been groomed with it, thank God, through my family. But it's a matter of, it's practice. Uh, yeah, it is. It's practice to yes. stay that way. Yes. To give your, uh, your most authentic answer try to think, well, I don't want to hurt people's feelings, but sometimes you just got to go straight forward, right, right. Uh, whether through speech, whether through any type of action. Um, it's just being your honest yeah, self. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you guys do a good job of that. I love that you said. I love that Shanae said practice. Practice. Like, that's so important. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so important. I think, I think that was great. It's a you, daily thing. It yeah. is definitely a daily thing. I think you make a commitment to be that and be who you are. And that's why it's important that you know, there's a lot of different things that are going on, but I think that we need things that speak to our soul, to our universe, to our God, right? What, whatever it is that drives you is going to keep you humble, I think, to a certain degree, and keep you thankful. And then when you're in that place, you just want to give back. Mm -hmm. You just can't absorb all of these blessings and say it's just all just for you. And I think through the different things that you ladies bring, whether it's professionalism, professionally or through activism, through song or dance, it's your way of giving back mm -hmm. in some kind of way. So, Shanae, let me ask you this. Why, when I asked you to be a part of this, why did you think you, you would want to be a part of this discussion today? Well, because of you. Um, you know, <laughs> Thank you. It, the, per, the person who is doing the asking invitation, I'm going to come because I find something in you mm -hmm. that I like. Thank you. So, hands down. And Real Chicks Rocks, like we all were mentioning, I actually, when I left the house, I was like, dang, I forgot my <laughs> uh, tank top. Just thinking we had to represent some sort of, yeah, you know, yeah. your, your statement. Um, but, yeah, if I usually I'm the type... Somebody told me I pick quality things. Like when I'm going out, I'm picking the event according to how I'm feeling about right. who's either DJing, who's sponsoring. I mean, that's honest. Right, right. Yeah. Right. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. I wanted to take a minute here to give each lady an opportunity to just promote their brand. And there are some things going on with you guys um, that people need to know about that. So I'm going to start with Madam CJ. Madam CJ, tell the people what's going on with you. Well, I am actually. Um, doing a fundraiser um, where I am wanting to begin a nine-month training course right. for a Heart for Girls Business Training Academy um, where I'll be, become a youth motivational speaker with an emphasis on girls. Um, I'm raising $4,000. Mm -hmm. So far, I've raised 610 Nice. And we have until May 20th to reach that goal. Okay. Um, actually, this Wednesday, I have to talk to the creator of the uh, program and let her know exactly where I am with my fundraiser. 
because if I cannot get into the um, the course that's going on right now, we're still going to work together. Mm -hmm. Good. So either way, um, you can go to www.gofundme.com slash Madam CJ Help Girls, M-A-D-A-M-C-J Help Girls. Share the link. Share the link. Share the link if you cannot <laughs> donate. <laughs> because I've had people to actually see it on other people's page, and I don't know these people, and right. they've sent money. Right, right, right. You know, so, and I don't like asking for money. So I'm asking because I need it. Okay, fair enough. And so when will the, the classes or the mentoring, the program actually start? It started. Okay. It started in April, um, and now it's May. Mm. So I have a few of the modules, but I don't have all of them. But the modules that I do have, I've already started researching and, you know, looking at everything and, and just figuring out what it is that I want to say to the girls, um, basically polishing myself to go into that arena mm. at speaking to the girls, wanting to keep the wild side right, of myself. right. right. Um, the smell yourself side of myself, mm -hmm. um, and and speak to them. So I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to speak to at-risk girls, mm -hmm. if I'm going to speak to the whole community, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm going to speak to boys and girls, right? I mean, I have a lot to say. I know you do. So, okay. and this is going to put me in another income bracket too. I know that's so right. So I'm very very happy yeah, about I was this. Excited about that. And speaking about income brackets, yeah. tell us what about your products. You got some products that you do. Well, I do have music. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You know. Um, and I do have stuff on Spotify, iTunes. I prefer you get it from iTunes. Okay. Um, even though people are running amok on Spotify. Child. <laughs> so anyway, but I'm grateful. All right. So, um, and then also Divine Clementine's Soap on a Rope. That is my soap company. I make the soaps myself. Um, but eventually we will hire a few people to do the soaps. Okay. To make them and just distribute them. Okay. And um, you can find them at www soap. I'm sorry, www.soap, the number two, tote.com. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, ma'am, CJ. Shante, what's going on, Shante? What hey are you there. Doing? I am doing a little bit of everything, mm -hmm. it seems, you know. Um, the most recent project, I would say, is Mo Audio. Mm -hmm. And that is with my cohorts, Carlton Hargrove and Lamar Shirley. Um, I love doing the show with them. I love those guys. They're awesome. <laughs> they really are. We have a really good time. Um, every week we are on ablradio.com and talk about all things soul related, you know, whether it's music, art, you know, um, it, sometimes we just rant or rave about whatever it is that's on our mind. Um, so I've got that going on. Um, at the end of the day, though, I'm a writer as yeah. much as I love uh, audio. And so many of the things that I've done recently for Creative Loafing have been around music, and that typically right. tends to be what I write about. Um, so that's the public-facing stuff. And then I'm also um, often called on to write bios for nice, artists nice. Um, or talk about uh, music releases nice. and that kind of thing. And I love doing that. I, I want to say, at the end of the day, I think all of us would agree we have our own personal um, reasons for doing things right. you know there's a certain part of us that we have to express through the things that we do to, to make money right and for me it is being a support being an encourager instilling in people a sense of confidence and so usually the writing that I do tends to do that in some way shape or form and I think that's why I've been always about interviewing people yeah. and finding out what they do so I can be like, oh, great job. Is that, is that a <laughs> nice way of being nosy? It. That's like permission to be nosy because you ask you what you want to ask. You, you learn do, a She lot. does. She asks a lot of you questions. Do. You do. And I mean, it's it's really great. I love um, encouraging people to keep yeah. doing whatever it is that they mm -hmm. happen to be doing. So ultimately, that's that's who I am and that's what I do. You are. You're great. And you know you have a great radio voice. Oh, thank you. I love <laughs> yes. listening to you. You yes. sound thank wonderful. Yes, you do. I love it. I love it, y'all. Thank you. You are very good at what you do. And, and you know, you, you say it very lightly, very gingerly. But you and Carlton and Lamars are like the, the gatekeepers, if you will. You guys touch every pulse of what's going on in Atlanta. And really, 
you know who's coming, who's not coming, what's going on, what what festivals are happening. You have insight on in, on all kind of music. You guys talk about different CDs and different tracks that you listen to. So you're just very musically infused, like culturally infused, and I think it's really great. So keep up the great work well, with thank that. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah, thank that's you. awesome work. My model friend, Atala, how are you? I'm well. What I'm you, well. I'm thankful. Yeah, like, yes. really and truly, I'm you thankful. You are thankful. Tell me about yes. Design for Your Life. Tell us about that. So, okay, so every, I'm, I'm, people call me, Mr. Miss Design Your Life. So, Design Your Life, or I should say Design Our Lives, and mm-hmm. you can find me on Instagram and Twitter under that handle. Yes. So, that's Design, O-U-R-L-I-V-E-S. And basically, that is something that I feel that everyone is capable of doing. I believe that we are the architects of our lives mm. and that I am pro being multifaceted. Yes. I, I'm an educator, yes, but I do believe that when I work with children, I don't want them to think I have to do this one thing for the rest of my life because, 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 because. Right, right. I believe that whatever it is you feel you're purposeful at, you should do those things. Right. I think that if you're a parent, you should be able to also do many of the other things and you know, not feel regretful or not resent the fact that you didn't get to, you know, just put your put your toe in the water, right, right, you know, and, right. and just try things. So that's what design your life means. And I try to live that every day. And I hope that people get that when they see me. Mm-hmm. Um, I also do wardrobe styling. And for, I would say, the last two years, people have been really reaching out to me to teach them how to to do head wraps. Yes. And that's something I've been doing since I'm... Uh, I would say about 19. I also started modeling when I was 19. And it's just been wonderful to be received by your peers, right. by people who you're just meeting, and by your community. So I'm so thankful that I'm able to share the things that I love, and I'm continuing to find out more about myself. Mm-hmm. I just recently, uh, I've always sang, but I just recently uh, was featured on Chaos Theory, which is uh, the, the Divine Sons. That's their, uh, that's their latest album. Nice. And the single that I'm on is called Scarlet Letter. Nice. And you can also find that on iTunes and Spotify, if you will, nice. <laughs> if you must. So, you know, I mean, I do vintage. I do vintage and wardrobe consulting. Um, I will always, probably always work with children. That's definitely one of my loves. And um, I just recently became a court appointed special advocate for children so awesome. i have a case i have a case with one child in particular where i will advocate for her legally in court awesome and um it's no joke yeah. it's no joke some of the things that our children have to live with every right, day right. it will break your heart it's heartbreaking so for me i believe like i said i believe in designing your life i believe in doing what you want do right. what you want do what you love Life, we know, it's so cliche. Life is short. It is. But it really, really is. And you have to capture the moment and design your life. And that's my hashtag. Hashtag design your life. Yes. Yes. Yes, Atala. Yes. And, he, and you know, my son, uh, Christopher, shout outs to my son, Christopher is seven. I think oh, you guys have all love met him. Christopher. Madam CJ has not met him, I don't I believe. Yes. You did. So he's, Everybody so loves he's Christopher. touched him. everybody here at he the has. table in some kind of way. And I have to hats off to you, Atala, because you're not a mom, but you have a nurturing spirit. And every time you're around my son, you you tug me in the sense that, Michelle, it's okay, allow him to be. Because I tend to be very, don't, 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 don't. And Atala will say, no, it's, it's okay. And she finds humor in what he does. And she thinks it's, it's his creative soul just trying to come out. He's a leader. He's very outspoken. And it's because of the things that I experience. I expose him to it's all my fault, but I think that you know Atala is just really good with that. So you know, hats off to you. I just Thank always you. commend you for what you do. I see you on Facebook. I see you're always in the school and advocating things for the children, and I think that's awesome. And and those are the kind of things that Real Chicks Rock would love to align with in some kind of way. I, I'm just one person, and yes. I can't be everywhere. But sometimes I send dollars, I send shirts, I send something, or my presence. To try to connect and build, because you can't do it by yourself. But I think that the little things that we do tend to build up and make a difference. And I think that's what it's all about. Um, We've also had an opportunity, at least my son did, and and Atala was in a video, uh, from Miranda Nicole. And she had a beautiful song, uh, Melanin Blue, 
Blues, I believe, blues, yeah. right? So she wanted to show you her heart was just breaking with everything that was, that's was that been going on in our communities, uh, especially our black communities, our black men. And so she had children in the, in the video, and it was just a really awesome day. And she had beautiful women, and their head was wrapped, and Natala was there. And it, again, just another humbling opportunity to be a part of someone doing what they can with the resources that they have to make a difference. So again, I commend all the ladies. Now, Shanae, mm -hmm. talk to me about Urban Spirit Dancers and other things that you guys have going on. Well, Urban Spirit Dancer derived from the documentary done by Ramadan Doc Naji. Um, Your brother. Yeah, definitely. Your brother. You don't see <laughs> yeah, one without yeah, the other. Sure sometimes. Yes, yes. You know I'm, I'm surprised he didn't come today. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right, right. Peace out. Shout out to you, brother. Yeah, uh -huh. so uh, what I did, I told him, I'm going to stick with you and ride this out because I love what it infused. It brought in the whole house music community to the best of his ability in the moment of being done. Mm -hmm. uh, since then, the part that delights my spirit, Urban Spirit Dancer, right, right. is how we've reached out to other genres besides our typical house music community. Right. Like, for instance, the first time we performed together, it was through the LGBT community called the Atlanta Review. Uh, and that was the first time we kind of took a non-routine performance and put it to the, the right. audience, the masses. It was received beyond, very well. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we uh, another LGBT mm -hmm. uh, um, area, the Atlanta Deaf community. Wow. Now, we already done a performance for them, but this one, the next one is June 6th, even bigger. So it'll be 3,000 people coming to the city because this is the National Deaf Awareness Day. Wow, wow. Um, to see their uh, their energy when the music comes on, because they're not hearing, they're not hearing right, anything. Right. They're just looking at our movement and feeling the bass. They mm -hmm. always say pick something with a heavy bass line because they're going to feel that. Mm -hmm. That's right up our alley, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. How's every, got, everything has a great bass line. So we're looking forward to that June 6th. But before that, we will be with Deep Music this coming weekend at Auburn Festival. They have, uh, they'll have they be on both the stages, Saturday and Sunday. So we'll just be bringing the energy with them. Uh, that particular team uh, building has came because they didn't forget about the dancers. Right. Um, a lot of things I like to stress is when it comes to dancing is like the DJ, we're hand in hand with you. We're like your sister and brother. You can't have one without the other. Um, I watch people get consumed by the DJ booth, and a lot of people are inspired DJs and forget there's everybody out there dancing and sweating their souls out to you. Mm -hmm. So that was the part, the part of the part of part of what I deep music why they told us like we wanted you to come with us. Like when we are performing DJ, we want you guys there mm -hmm. as much as you can. Mm -hmm. It's not necessary that we will only perform with deep music, but they are the ones who wanted to right right keep the form going, I the collaboration you. going, should I say. And our young DJs with us, we're all about in our 30s, mm -hmm. you know, Ramadan, I won't say his age, but, you know, <laughs> as far as we're young, uh, we're thirsty, we don't want house music to die, right, you know, right. and we're going to just bring it to the masses, you know. We appreciate yeah. that. So how can people get more information about you guys? You got a YouTube channel? Um, well, the YouTube channel is Doc Nanji in the web, as mm -hmm. far as because that's something we... I uh, wanted to show to her how we communicate. We are always honest communicators. No one's perfect. He can get on my nerves tense all the time. and I'll. But the fact that I'm going to be straightforward with them and vice versa back, that's what keeps us thriving. Mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so Doc Nanji in the web will pull up a lot of our in information through Urban Spirit Dancer or hashtag Urban Spirit Dancer, typically on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, nothing on Twitter as of right now. Um, but it's moving pretty well with just the social media we have out there. Because, you know, social media is saturated, so mm. we try to find different avenues to yeah. communicate yeah. to people. Yeah, you do. Yeah. I, I'm going to read uh, what a definition of a word is. And you guys, just bear with me. Empowerment. Saying or doing things that keep individuals going, whether they are feeling uh, incapable or not. Speaking to someone's situation or dilemma by giving them the tools they need to rise above their circumstances. Shantae, what does that mean to you? It's interesting that you say the tools they need in that definition because I was thinking about this whole concept, and mm -hmm. I think that in order to empower someone to do something, they, they have to know at the end of the day, or rather at the beginning of the day, how to do it in the first place. 
Um, so I think giving someone tools, giving someone instruction is very important. Mm -hmm. um, when I think about that definition, it seems to play right into that. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Atala? Empowerment. Yes. So I think all of us at this at this table here today, we believe in, well, we know how important that is. And I think back on my life and I think about people who have just said a couple of words to me and who have just given me an extra nudge and told me, you know what, it's okay to be the person that you are. It's okay to be the way that you are. And I, I think you mentioned your son. I think it's very important that we we talk to our youth about how important it is for them to continue to be who they are. Absolutely. I think that's something that we don't do enough. I think a lot of things that we do don't always empower our children. So I think empowerment is giving you the opportunity to be who you are, giving you the opportunity to be able to say, I need help, or no thank you, or yes. You know, I think that's some, I think that's what empowerment is. Okay. I, I think it's and it's so many forms of facets where that happens. You know, you don't have to necessarily yell it from the mountaintop, mm -hmm. but sometimes you can do it very quietly. And then sometimes you do have to get out in the streets and you do have to say, hey, this is what we need. This is what we want. And I'm going to speak on that person's behalf because they may not be able to do so. Do so empowerment is just giving the opportunity. I think giving the opportunity. Okay. Yeah. Do you think it's a catchy word, or do we, are we really doing it? I, mean, I think real talk. it. I think it is a catchy word, um, but I also think that we don't always even realize when we're doing it. Okay. So I don't know. I'm sitting here and I'm looking at all of you, and I think sometimes we don't even realize that we're doing it. Right. And sometimes you'll meet someone and they'll say, "I read something that you said online," or right. you, you know, people will tell me things, and I'm like. I wasn't even thinking about it that way. Right. I was just living. Right. So I think a lot of times living your purposeful life by default mm -hmm. is empowering people. Right. Right. By default. You know, even though you don't say, I'm going to empower somebody by walking across that street and looking both ways, but you may have. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think when you live your most purposeful life, it's going to just happen naturally. It's going to happen naturally. And just really quick, something I like to say is... Uh, uh, pride and humility, mixing those two together. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I say um, prideful, mm -hmm. humility, yeah. or humble pride. There you, go. you know, and I think there's different times where you have, to, you have to practice and you have to figure out how much of that and how much of that I'm going to put in. But I think that uh, if you live that way with humility mm -hmm. and pride at the same damn time, mm -hmm. it's gonna, it's, it, it's, you're going to make it happen. You got it. You're you going to make it. it happen. Madam CJ, what empowers you? Because you are you are beautiful. Thank you're just you. as cute as you want to be Thank and you. sexy. You have different aspects to you. But what really empowers you? Is it that something just pisses you off and you like, I'm just going to show these mofos what I'm made of? That's pretty much it. And you just <laughs> oh, go yes. with it. Yeah. That's what it is? That's what it is. I mean, because, I mean, all my life I've been like the smallest in my class. All my life I've been like the smallest in my class right. or, you know, amongst my friends and and the, the flat-chested girl, the late bloomer, you know. Um, and I've always loved it when people told me no. Right. I tried out for Majorette five times. They kept telling me no. And I told them I was going to make it, and I made it the sixth time. Right, right. Just like with DJ Nabs, I told him I was going to be his go-go dancer. And he looked at me, and he was like, you're going to have to gain some weight. And I was like, honey, I don't gain no weight, but I can dance better than two girls you got up there. I know, that's mm -hmm. right. And end up being up there. All right now. You know, mm -hmm. so um, empowering for me is when somebody tells me no mm -hmm. or when somebody doubts me, mm -hmm. and I can see that they're doubting me. Right, you know, right. that's, that's how I get my fire. I hear you. I hear you. Shanae? Oh, very quiet. I'm glad you... It's such a strong word yeah. that, to me, the word in itself is taken for granted mm -hmm. because this, that little piece in the word, in the middle, power, power, everybody always wants power for something, you know? Like, power, power, power. I'm like, my favorite power is spiritual power. Mm -hmm. Taking a little bit of what Atala said. Every day, I wake up, I'm excited about life. Right. I don't know how I'm going to make the difference, who's going to make the difference, or it might be be something bad that's going to turn around positive. Mm -hmm. But like she said, but the only thing is I keep the humble side. Yeah, even do. with our 
even with Urban Spirit Dancer. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm Jersey, he's New York. He brings out that cockiness that oh I Oh my goodness, know, not that, Jersey and New York. Yeah. Oh my yeah. goodness. <laughs> so, but I'm always reminding him, like, it's, I'm, bit, I'm about the blessings that are long longevity blessings, right. not short term blessings. Right, right. We might have did a great dance movement in a moment, but next day somebody, there's somebody mm -hmm. else ready and mm -hmm. wanting to shine. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a shared shine. It is. So you have to know when to like back up and when to give a little. Right. Everything empowers me. Right. Uh, I'm empowered because I'm a black, I'm a black lesbian woman All like right. that. All right. You know. All right. So I'm always having to constantly be the balance of how my ladyism and my my masculinism and feminism. That's right. the best word right. to use. Right. Which is why I'm always speaking about the term androgyny. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a heavy uh, that's a heavy load to carry when you're waking up it and is. you're like I work with all guys, my best friends is guys, mm -hmm. but I still like being a woman mm -hmm. and want to be treated with respect. There you go. And it work and it happens. It's that the the you gain respect when you give respect yeah, is absolutely. real. Absolutely. No one's not going to respect you if you're walking around here. Uh, just speaking and talking to anyone and, and they don't care about tomorrow. Right. Yeah. Right. I'm always remembering there's a tomorrow. Right. Yeah. Right. And I think what makes you humble is that don't don't discredit what you do before you even got here. Mm -hmm. You interact with people every mm -hmm. single day in a very humbling position because you serve. Mm -hmm. Right. You make sure that when people come into that hotel, they got what they need. You point them in the right direction. And so you get practice every day. Every, every day. time you go to yeah. work. You are in a position where you're constantly giving and not looking for reward. That's just who you are. That's just what you do. And then you translate that into dance. So when you come in the house community and we see you getting it in, that could have been all day working, not having a day off in a couple of days, just getting it out. Because now I can give to this music and it's going to get back to mm -hmm. me in a release that, you know, I couldn't get working all day. Mm -hmm. So that's what it is. So that's, that's a very excellent thing. So. I wanted to also ask you ladies, and, and some are entrepreneurs at the table and some are not, but the question is just general for everybody. W what are some of the struggles that you're facing in just being an entrepreneur? Because for me, it's not easy, right? It's a grind. I was blessed to know this gentleman, our, our, our production manager for the day is Jay Ray from Static Life. Yeah! And Thank he's holding you. it down. Okay. And, and this is his setup, right? So if I wanted to do this somewhere else, it would cost time and money. Right? Real talk. And we sound real crisp, crisp and clear. We're like, one, two, one, two. We're doing all that. But everything that I do, is, it's, it's from me, right? It comes from the most high. He provides. And I'm led to do certain things. And I give and I do and I sow. And I do. But it's hard. And then and there's some times when I'm like, what in the, what the hell am I, why am I trying to do this, right? I do. I question it. I'm like, this is a lot. I could be in the bed. I could be home. I don't need to do this. I'm tired. But then what Atala says, is then somebody says, hey, I read your post. Or, hey, I got to get that shirt. Or, hey, when is the next time you're going to do community service work? I want to be with you. So right now, I'm not going to Bank of America as much as I'd like to. Let's be clear. <laughs> I'd like to go to Bank of America where they address me as, hey, Miss Bird, glad to see you again making another <laughs> deposit. That's not happening. But I just well, want to as ask, much as you'd like. Well, you know, it's happening in the universe. I know it's in due season, in due time. It'll get to where it needs to be. But, you know, faith without work is dead, right? I have right. to work, right? You don't work, you don't eat. You got to sew, you got... I know all of that, you know what I'm saying? But I'm just going to ask you guys, what drives you? Because it takes... I know Madam CJ, her products are nice. I bought her soap, you know? Right. That stuff's not cheap. I think we... Have we all bought uh, Madam yeah. CJ's you know Divine what I'm saying? I bought soap that on thing. And she puts love and effort and good products into that. So, like, what keeps you guys doing what you do? Well, I know for me, um, the fact that I have a quality product, mm -hmm. right. I have a quality product, but I will say this, um, before I started my soap company, I did not know how important it was to have clarity around your target market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, from every aspect, from race to age to gender to income bracket, you must have clarity right. on all of that all right. before you even start marketing. Right. If I could start over, I would. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even market to my friends. Right. I would market That's to the target market, crunchy granola, disposable income right. having <laughs> that knows the value. Right. People that are seeking to change their life. Right. That do not mind spending $10 Absolutely for a bar. Not. So 
You understand what I'm saying? I understand what you're saying. So, I mean, can we talk about that? Can we talk about friends and family? Yeah, we can. You know, the friends and family network. You know, whatever, you know, whatever cell phone company. They say Mm -hmm. the friends and family, Mm -hmm. you know, and you think to yourself, you know, my friends and family, they are going to support me first. But like Madam CJ said, it's really about people who value Value, value, value. Value is really the most important thing. Mm -hmm. So for me, I would just say, I have no, I I say to myself, I'm like, I have no other choice. Right. When I wake up in the morning and I think about, I'm six feet tall, Mm -hmm. you know? So when I walk out the door every day, because of a couple reasons, you know, I, there's no other way around it. I have to do what I have to do. Mm -hmm. I have to do the things that I love because Mm -hmm. I don't have, you know, uh, a whole bunch of organizations telling me, Atala, you 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 need to just do other things that you love. I I don't have any other choice. Right. So for me, I'm, I, it's just my obligation, and I think we all agree at this table that service mm-hmm. is important. Mm-hmm. So I think that if we see value in what we do, mm-hmm. and if other people see value in it, mm-hmm. then there's just no other. You can't that, stop. You, you, can't, you can't, stop. can't stop, and you just continue in. And I like to say it will snowball. Right. It will just continue to so, snowball, mm-hmm. and then. Like Madam CJ said, mm-hmm. people will see the value. Later mm-hmm. on, people will mm-hmm. see the value mm-hmm. right. sooner or later. And I mean, Michelle, I remember when we were on the set of uh, Miranda Nicole's video shoot, you said to me, you know, I'm going to get with you guys because one day I may not be able, to, one day some of us may not be able to afford it. Mm-hmm. I think that that's something like, I think we take for granted mm-hmm. how much talent. Mm-hmm. I think maybe in Atlanta we're mm-hmm. spoiled, mm-hmm. but there, when you see something wonderful, you get you're it. supposed to grab, grab right. you're supposed to say, hey, I, I want to be it. a part, thank mm-hmm. you so much for being who you are. Yes, I'm so thankful yeah. that, you know, you are sharing who you are. And I think sometimes we take that for granted. I think maybe social media has right. us, so, we're you know, we're, yeah, we're a little, we're underwhelmed by everything because yes. yes. things are right. so Relax. much at our reach. Mm-hmm. Right. So that when we see something wonderful, we think, oh, you know, I'll just be able to get those soaps tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Or I can yeah. get those soaps next yeah. week. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, well, um, you know, I want a toddler to do some wardrobe styling mm-hmm. for me. But, you know, I don't know if I want to really pay her that much yeah. or I want to pay her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like, you might... I, I mean, we, we you know may not saying? be here tomorrow. You know right. we, we may, may be, be somewhere Paris, else. Yeah. Yeah. We may be somewhere else. Yes, <laughs> we're humble, but yes, we are here for a reason. We are. Right. And, and that, don't take it for granted. And that Atala <laughs> put me in the bad, one of the baddest vintage dresses on the planet. And um, <laughs> I went to her pop-up store. See, you don't, you have not because you don't do it, right? So you popped up a store about a, almost a year ago, Labor yeah, Day weekend. Yeah, yeah. And I oh walked my goodness, in it has been and I year. said, I need something hot for Cancun. I'm going to Cancun in October. I need something fierce. And she found something. And when I tell you... Fire. Everybody was falling on the Ooh, floor. <laughs> when you nice posted that picture, fire. people were like, oh, my God. Fire. I never see Michelle. I right. never see Michelle turned right. up because that's the whole thing. Right, it's about turning up and turning down. There you go. That's what I think. Of, what's what I think wardrobe does. That's it's what it you, is. but it, it's just turning right. you up. My my goal is to be a philanthropist, and yes. so you are, yes. and I believe I am, and I receive that, and so I sow in unexpected places. And you know, people will say to me, "You were one of the last people I'd have thought to give me something." Why? Because I'm not their friend. And it's not about friends. It's about, I read what you post. Right. Mm. And I believe in what you're doing. I believe in the product that you have. And I believe in myself. And so I want to embody myself with goodness. Right. If you got something that I like that's going to help me shine, well, damn it, I got to get it. And I want to get get that soap. And I want to feel a certain way because my skin is beautiful. I'm trying to preserve it. I want to smell nice, look good. Mm -hmm. And by me sparing that 10 little dollars... Mm -hmm. It empowers her to keep her doing what she's yeah. going to do. And now she has a return customer because when that bar is done, guess what? I'm going to go back and get her another one. I and if I have to get that. it from Thank Auburn you. or Edgewood or wherever she is for the day, I'm going to skip my little pigeon toe self down there <laughs> and I'm going to get myself. You understand what I'm talking about? I appreciate you, that. You know, you Thank have you. to. And that's the thing is I don't know what it is about us. Um, and women have spending power. Let me give you a number. 85% of us. We buy and shop more than the men, but the men make the public relations and the marketing decisions, oh, that's my right? Mm-hmm. So, that, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Say so, you know what I'm saying? So, that's, that's the yeah. rumor. Let's just say that's the alleged rumor. So, we spend a lot of money, but why don't we spend it within ourselves? 
You know, well, that I, spend, I know I spend it. With, I was with, with right, right, right. I was gonna say that, Madam yeah. CJ. Like mm-hmm. we we practice. You know, I think we, at this table, yeah. I we, can yeah. definitely say table. we practice the principles of Kwanzaa. Three hundred and sixty-five days yeah. of yes. the year. Yeah, because we have to. Mm-hmm. There's no. I mean, there's no other way around it. We have to. I mean, when I just think about. Where would we be if you know if certain things weren't supported in the past? Think mm-hmm. about our ancestors and think about if they weren't supported and if they didn't, you know, make certain sacrifices for us. So I'm like, there's no other option. Yes, right. self determination. Right. Right. Yes, purpose is right. important. Right. Yes, you know, we have to support our businesses and yes, we have to keep each other accountable. Mm-hmm. Right. That's right. Absolutely. You know, and we have right. to understand why our businesses do well or don't do as well because we've been through so much as a people Mm -hmm. and we have to remember those things you know just our just the experience that we've had in this country and in other countries definitely so there's no other way around it we have to support each other touching on something Atala said um, in terms of service um, and this is a small thing but on the bottom of all of my invoices I have a statement that says thank you for the opportunity to be of service I love it I love it and I think as an entrepreneur, that's something that you have to keep in mind because it is an opportunity. Even though we are blessed to have people that buy into our businesses right. and who, you know, do believe in what it is that we're doing, I think that's part of what keeps it going. And that's part of what makes sure that you do get that next piece of business if you are constantly thankful and if you're constantly grateful for the opportunities that you get, you find yourself getting them more right. and more. Right. So and and you and I have not had have done business together, that's going to change. I need a bio. Hey, let's do it. I need a bio. I need, I, and writing is not my skill set. It's not my strong skill set. So that's probably an avenue that I need to explore to just promote the brand for those that like to read. Um, we take for granted, we've said it several times here at the table, that social media is oversaturated. But there are people that just like to pick up a book or pick up a, a newspaper article or go online yeah. just to read a story. And that's why I think it's important that people know that writing is not dead. And that, it's mm-hmm. not something that everybody can do. Not right. everybody can sing. No. Not everybody can style. Not everybody can you dance. You see that? And, you, you see know. the diversity at the table? Right. <laughs> right. Did it's you true. see that? It's true. <laughs> and, and the hand in hand into receiving everything is the double g's gg giving and gratitude Mm -hmm. you gotta give to receive and you gotta stay grateful why do people in this great us of a Mm. why do they feel like someone who sings someone who dances someone who does wardrobe styling someone who writes someone who does poetry why shouldn't they be compensated Right, right why shouldn't they be compensated but if you work at the post office right you have to be compensated, right? right? So, but everybody enjoys art. Right. Everybody has a painting on their wall. They do. Everybody has music in their collection. Right. Everybody has a book. And everybody got some clothes. Right, right. You right. better believe it. Right. So, <laughs> why do we feel that when it's time to, con- how what would you say, receive these right. items or right. services, we should? you know, bargain them down no. or not pay them at all. Yeah, I think what it is is something that uh, Madam CJ said earlier, and it's about changing the market, our target market. Mm-hmm. I think that we're very comfortable with the people we know, mm-hmm. and they're comfortable with us. And so they feel like, girl, you're going to be all right. You know, I don't, you know, you be all right. I, I don't have it this week. Mm-hmm. We need to find <laughs> the people mm-hmm. that respect and appreciate your yes. style. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and your artistry and what you do. So there are millions of people in this planet. Why aren't we reaching them? And so it should be a constant driver that we try to get to that market. Mm. We pound up our friends. We give them peace. I'll talk to you when I get back. I'll send you a postcard. But I got to go to where people want what I got to say, yes. hear, do, yes. wear, whatever. It's yes. out there. And yes. so I think that we get really comfortable. We get stifled mm-hmm. and we get afraid. Mm-hmm. And, and, f- and fear should not be something that we practice as entrepreneurs. We can't. Right. No. We're too far out from the shore now. Right. We can't go back. No, so right. the only way we can go is to the top. So we got to keep doing it. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to encourage each one of you to continue to push your brand, you. push your market, push your voice. Don't be afraid of it because what you have, we don't care about color. The only color we care about is green. green. Let's keep it 106. <laughs> Right. We only care about green and we care about a person's soul. Yes, right. And we care right. about how we leave them. Mm-hmm. How yes. we leave them should be better than how we found them. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. And everything that you do, you style them better, you write better, you sing Turn better, and soap up them up better, lives. and you dance better for them. With that, I'm just going to say this. I want to thank everybody here today. Thank 
you. This was Thank nice. You. This was cute and fun. Yes. I think we touched on a couple of <laughs> yes. things. Right, I appreciate the diversity at the table. Shouts out to my engineer, Jay Ray, that Thank made it you, help Jay. me to make it happen. Another shout out to Studio 7 for allowing us to be here. We're at 393 Marion Street. Please find them, get to know them here in Atlanta. I bid you all a wonderful and fantastic day. Peace and blessings to you all and continue to rock on. Gracias, Michelle. Thank you. Same to you. Thank, Thank you so, you so much. much. Thank you.